like to welcome our guest of honor, Justice R.C. Lohoti, 35th Chief Justice of India, who is a jurist extraordinaire. His contributions to evolution of arbitration in India is not just unparalleled, but unprecedented. Justice Lahori is also a much celebrated author. We are honored to have Sir joining us today. On behalf of Campus Law Center, I thank you, Sir, for accepting our invite and for addressing the inaugural session of International Conference on Law and Spirituality. I yield the floor to you, Sir. Thank you, Kajal. Professor Seema Singh, Professor Raman Mittal, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the organizers, especially Professor Seema Singh, deserve to be congratulated for organizing this symposium on a theme which is unique and innovative. The significance of the subject cannot be denied, but it has not captured the attention of the jurists and the legal circles so much as it deserves. The truth is that law and spirituality cannot be separated, and yet, of late, the two seem to be drifting away from each other. <coughs> law and spirituality have a lot many things in common, as we shall shortly see. Let me begin with, by leaning a little on the lighter side, the first common feature of the two, law and spirituality is that it is not easy to define any of the two. Yet, it cannot be denied that the basic features, the fundamentals of the law and the spirituality remain the same for such fundamentals are eternal. Spirituality is the quality that involves deep feelings and beliefs of a religious nature rather than the physical parts of life. Oxford defines the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. The shift in priorities allows us to embrace our spirituality in a more profound way. Our ancient classics and epics are replete with hints of secret doctrines and mystic truths. Illustratively, Vedas, Puranas, Ismrati, Shruti, and Upanishad are collectively the source of religion and also of spirituality as well of the law. The mysterious secret taught by the Upanishads is that the soul or spiritual consciousness is the only source of true knowledge. Collectively, they are the source of dharma. Interestingly, these are also considered as the primary source of law. Muslims believe their holy book to be the source of law and also the path of achieving spirituality. Arnold said, law can never be defined. Austin defined law as a command of the sovereign. Salmon has criticized the definition of Austin for two reasons. First, the definition is inadequate as the greater part of a legal system consists of laws which neither command nor forbid things to be done. Customs and traditions are outstanding examples. Secondly, Austin has missed the ethical element in law or the idea of right or justice. He solely goes by the efficacy of the command. Law is the declaration of the principles of justice. According to Saman, law is an instrument of justice. Demosthenes wrote, every law 
is a gift of God and decision of sages. This is law to which all men yield obedience for many reasons, and especially because every law is a discovery and gift of God, and at the same time, the decision of wise men. <clears throat> the ancient texts of jurisprudence and religion both have used dharma, nyay, and vidhi, that is, religion, justice, and law as interchangeable terms. Law and spirituality both aim at establishing law and order in society. <clears throat> Any political system which aims at achieving peace and prosperity for the people must have recourse to ensuring enforcement of law and preservance of order. Such object would be an utopia unless law and spirituality come together and act hand in hand. There is much in common in the two. Let me enumerate a few features which are common to both. One, there is no place for superstitions, fantasy, or escapism in truly spiritual life and in a truly legal society. Two, spiritual progress and application of laws, none in any way blocks scientific and materialistic progress. In fact, it gives altruistic touch and prudent directions to both so that progress will not be focused towards luxury, comfort, and worldly profits only. None would permit in achieving and empowering only some privileged few. Three, scientific and materialistic progress within the four corners of law, guided by spirituality, would lead to the creation of a holistic growth whose benefits would reach out to the whole of humanity. The two acting hand in hand in every front of life would elevate happiness and illuminate the future. Four, a perfect enactment and enforcement of laws requires tap and sadhana. So does the spirituality. Tap means self-restraint, penance, and voluntary observance of ascetic disciplines for chiseled self-refinement. Sadhana is a process of self-discipline, self-improvement, self-transformation, and inner ascent by individual efforts. Positive orientation of thoughts, broadening of attitude, cultivation of virtuous qualities, and sincere practice for their adoption in conduct are integral parts of sadhana. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the India, are a constitutional democracy. Our constitution is the law of the laws, a source of all the laws. It can be said that the power exercised by the king now belongs to the constitution. Under the constitution, the law belongs to the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. One makes the law, the second enforces the law, third, the judiciary interprets the law and tells what the law is. The judiciary has also been ordained to perform the task of overseeing the enforcement of laws and also to keep the legislature and the executive within the bounds laid down by the constitution. The grievance of never ending, the grievance is never ending of delay and disposal of cases and mounting areas in the courts. Major part of litigation would come to an end if each of the three wings of governance voluntarily adopt the discipline of imbibing spirituality in the performance of their respective duties. Recently, the Honorable CGI observed that laws are not being passed with the requisite care and caution, and that is the cause of increasing litigation. 
I also read the observation of Honorable the CGI as telling that the parliament is lacking in spirituality. What he said was the, uh, lacking in spirituality. Is spirituality abhors is superficial or perfunctory performance of function. The courts are called upon to correct the actions of executive as they were not performed with honesty, sincerity, and consistent with the rule of law, the traits which belong to the realm of spirituality. Honorable judges, when they enter in their offices, are required to take the oath of bearing true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India, to perform their duties without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and to uphold the Constitution, the laws. By what the judges fear or solemnly affirm to stand by, all lie within the domain of spirituality, and they are tap and sadhana, which enable the judges to emerge true to their oath. I recall a great judge having said that a judge cannot be a true judge and cannot dismiss justice unless he has a spiritual bend of mind. I venture to say that some of the judgments delivered by the highest court of the country have a potential to break the moral and ethical fiber of the society. And this has happened because the honorable judges, though learned, were overawed by materialistic and worldly needs of the people. And while doing so, they have unwittingly downsized the wisdom and discretion dictated by spirituality. Legal rules have an important role to play in making possible an effective realization of morality in the actual behavior of human beings. Moral principles cannot function in a social vacuum or in a war of all against all. Just two examples. One, do not take what belongs to another is about as trite an example of a moral precept as can be found in the books. But to decide what belongs to another, we resort not to morals, but to law. Do not take what belongs to another must of necessity, less on standards, borrowed from the law and without that support, it could not achieve reality in the conduct of human affairs. The institution of marriage this is the second example. The institution of marriage has moral implications, but this institution can scarcely function morally or legally without defining and upholding the marital status. Among the Eskimos, the concept of marriage exists, but there are no clear signposts demarcating the beginning and the end of a marital relationship. The result is that what one man use, the result is that what one man use as a fair contest for the lady's favors, the other may see it as an adulterous invasion of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, the existence and conscientious administration of a legal system cannot be unrelated to a realization of such moral objectives in the affairs of life, which are dictated by the wisdom of spirituality. These are the few thoughts for your consideration. And I hope that this seminar so well organized is going to be a long lead in the direction of restoring the unity of law with spirituality. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And my question is, sir, you have written a wonderful book on the preamble of the Indian constitution, which is also considered as the key to open the mind of the constitution makers. Now, when we talk about the constitution of India, most of the things have been adopted from one country or another country. But the important thing is when we are going to interpret the constitution, whether we are also adopting foreign interpretations when we are going to interpret these terms 
or once we are talking about the relationship between spirituality of uh, spirituality and law do you see or do you find some relationship between the preamble and the spirituality so this was the question sir which i wanted to ask you and i will request you to answer this question of mine sir over to you laoti sir thank you ma'am <clears throat> is true that uh, i have written i won't say it was a book is few notes on the preamble preamble has got such a vast response that uh, i don't think about 100 or 150 pages would suffice to be a book on preamble it can run into books and volumes <clears throat> i am reminded i just uh, could lay my hands i have taken a print out and kept with my my text of the constitution see <clears throat> when it is a very pertinent question very pertinent question and i would say i would rather collect courage to say that while interpreting the constitution the preamble is often lost sight of <clears throat> uh i may quote the words of uh, dr radhakrishnan uh from his speech in the constituent assembly on 26 january 1947 what he said dharmam shatrash kshatram dharma righteousness is the king of kings it is the ruler of both the people and the rulers themselves it is the sovereignty of the law we have asserted see dr adha krishnan finds dharma being reflected in the preamble and that is what has been indicated by uh, by his excellency our chief guest in his very learned speech of the day this preamble came up for the consideration of all the students of law would know in the famous case of keshavanand bharti and in keshavanand bharti's case the chief justice sikri he observed <coughs> that the preamble is of extreme importance and and what he said i would read with emphasis and the constitution should be read and interpreted in the light of the grand and noble vision expressed in the preamble chief justice sikri said it's a grand and noble vision which has been expressed in the preamble few know ordinarily you know the preamble is written in the in the beginning and then the book follows but what happened in constituent assembly was that the text of the constitution was approved by constituent assembly and thereafter the preamble was drafted the reason being that the constituent assembly desired that the quint essence of the entire constitution should find reflected in the preamble and that is the significance of the preamble the preamble is the quint essence of the entire constitution pure samvidhan ka nichod samvidhan ki uddeshika mein pratilakshit hota hai aur isliye jab bhi samvidhan ki vyakhya karne ka prashn utpann ho preamble ko nazarandaaz nahi kiya ja sakta ab jo char shabd प्रियंबल में प्रयोग किए गए हैं उनका आप महत्ता देखिए और अतिशोक्ति होगी यदि मैं ये कहूं कि यदि प्रियंबल को पढ़कर उसी पर कोई चिंतन करे तो कदाचित उसे संविधान पढ़ने की आवश्यकता ही नहीं ये ज्यादा बड़ी बात मैं कह रहा हूं छोटे मुंह बड़ी बात बट विथ कॉन्फिडेंस आई से आई से वट आई मीन देखिए चार शब्द प्रयोग किए गए संविधान के उद्देश्य का जस्टिस लिबर्टी इक्वलिटी एंड फ्रेटर्निटी 
इतने विद्वान लोग थे चाहते तो चार शब्द लिख करके छोड़ देते पर नहीं उन्होंने प्रत्येक शब्द को क्वालिफाई किया और ये जो क्वालिफाई किया है बहुधा क्वालिफिकेशन लिमिटेशन होता है बट द फ्रेमर्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हु एडॉप्टेड द प्रीम्बल हैव क्वालिफाइड ईच ऑफ दीज एक्सप्रेशन बाय सर्टेन वर्ड्स विच फॉलो एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर वेन आई रीड दीज वर्ड्स ईच ऑफ देम गिव्स वन एन एक्सपांशन टू द कंसेप्ट Encompassed in the potent words used in the preamble, four words. So it gives an expanse. At the same time, it provides limitations as well. Expanse doesn't mean go haywire. Please limit yourself. Now, look here in the slide. Kindly read with me. Justice, just not justice. Justice means anything. न्याय जो भी हमारे जो हमारे समझ में आया वो न्याय कर दिया नहीं जस्टिस सोशल इकोनॉमिक एंड पॉलिटिकल सामाजिक आर्थिक और राजनीतिक अब ये उन्होंने अब राजनीति में क्या न्याय होता है पर संविधान निर्माताओं ने ये कहा कि न्याय केवल ये नहीं कोर्ट में आए दो आदमी उनने साक्ष दी वकीलों की बहस सुनी और फैसला कर दिया वो जस्टिस नहीं संविधान कहता है कि प्रत्येक नागरिक और धरा पर प्रत्येक व्यक्ति के साथ सामाजिक आर्थिक और राजनीतिक न्याय हो ये संविधान का आदेश है एक दूसरी बात लिबर्टी व्हाट लिबर्टी लिबर्टी ऑफ थॉट expression and belief on one side as i said it gives an expanse to the meaning of term liberty at the same time it provides limitations the constitution says give liberty of thought expression and belief it doesn't mean that give liberty of luxuries give liberty of acquiring so much of wealth as you wish collect tons of gold in your tijori this is not liberty or move any place and do anything i am sorry to say and i will be very guarded just as our honorable chief guest has been that many a judgment of the constitutional courts they are assigning a meaning to the liberty which are destructive of the moral and ethical fiber of the society in the name of liberty the constitution framers never permitted that liberty they said liberty is not physical pleasure liberty is thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and opportunity and to promote among them all why why this justice liberty and equality the whole purpose of justice liberty and equality is to promote fraternity humko nyay milega swatantrata hogi samta hogi par kyun isliye ki is desh ke pratyek vyakti ki garima aur rashtr ki ekta aur akhandata सुनिश्चित करने वाली बंधुता देखिए आज कई घटनाएं ऐसी घटित हो रही हैं जिसमें स्वतंत्रता के नाम पर देश को तोड़ने वाली ताकतें सर उठा रही हैं और मैं क्षमा मांगते हुए कहना चाहता हूं कि हमारे माननीय न्यायालयों ने लिबर्टी की कुछ ऐसी व्याख्या कर दी है फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच के नाम पर वो कहते हैं कि यदि आप देश के खिलाफ भी कुछ बोलना चाहते हैं तो बोलिए बोलने से क्या होता है हाँ कुछ आप तोड़ फोड़ करें तो एक अलग बात है पर आप देश के खिलाफ यदि नारे लगा रहे हैं तो लगाने की आपको स्वतंत्रता है लिबर्टी है आपको आई डोंट थिंक दैट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एवर कॉन्टेम्पलेटेड सच टाइप ऑफ लिबर्टी बींग गिविन क्यों 
कि उससे हमारी फ्रेटर्निटी ही नष्ट हो जाएगी यदि लिबर्टी की हमने ऐसी व्याख्या की नाउ द लास्ट टू थ्री मिनट्स हाउ हाउ दिस वॉट एवर ऑनरेबल चीफ गेस्ट हैज वेरी वंडरफुली इन द चोजन वर्ड्स प्रपाउंडेड एट हाउ द स्पिरिचुअलिटी एंड लॉ आर कंबाइंड टूगेदर इन अवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड लॉज एंड अनलेस the law and spirituality go hand in hand possibly we will not be able to reach the object contemplated by the preamble to the constitution i give just two three example for the source first let me bring it possibly our honorable chief guest must be knowing but i would like to show him this book ye jara blurs ka hata sakte hain kya just just a minute please give me my my background is blurred i'll i'll make it clear yes this is the book sansad bhavan se sandesh bharat compiled by justice dr rama joyis member of parliament rajya sabha message from the parliament house it's a beautiful but a very small coffee table book now the entire parliament which is the creator of the constitution the creator of all the laws is vibrating with his spirituality but our honorable members seldom look at what is the message of the parliament i give you just only three examples only three they are numberless contained in this brochure but i give only three when वन एंटर्स लोकसभा के सुविशाल कक्ष के अंदर सभाध्यक्ष की पीठ के पीछे की दीवार के ऊपर अंकित है धर्म चक्र प्रवर्तनाय ललित विस्तर अध्याय 26 से ये लिया गया है और उपनिषद घोषित करता है कि धर्म पाप चिंतन का नाश करता है अतः धर्म ही सर्वोत्कृष्ट तत्व है ये सभापति की पीठ के पीछे लिखा हुआ है फिर जब संसद भवन के प्रथम द्वार से होकर केंद्रीय सभांगण की ओर बढ़ते हैं तो केंद्रीय सभांगण के द्वार के ऊपर संस्कृत में पंच तत्र का ये श्लोक परिलक्षित होता है अयम नज परो वेद गणना लघु चेत साम उदार चरिता नाम तो वसुधेव कुटुंबकम ये संदेश है ये सूक्ति ये मेरा है ये तेरा है ये दूसरे का है ऐसा दृष्टिकोण छोटे मन वालों का होता है उदार मन वालों का तो सारा विश्व ही अपना एक परिवार होता है दैट इज फ्रेटर्निटी कॉन्टेम्पलेटेड बाय द प्रियम्बल टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और तीसरा उदाहरण और दे करके क्योंकि तो बात फिर ये लंबी होती है तीसरी बात राज्यसभा के प्रवेश द्वार के ऊपर अंकित है सत्यम वद धर्मम चर ये तेत्रेयी उपनिषद शिक्षावल्ली से लिया गया है जिसका आशय है कि कृष्ण यजुर्वेद के तेत्री उपनिषद की शिक्षावल्ली में अध्ययन समाप्त कर घर लौटे विद्यार्थियों के प्रति ये नियम दिया गया है ये संदेश सर्वथा सर्वदा याद रखने और जीवन भर पालन करने हेतु योग्य है संपूर्ण संसद में विभिन्न स्थानों पर हमारी जो प्रचुर संभ्यता है हमारी एंशंट क्लासिक्स एंड एपिक्स में जो है जिसमें से अनेक उदाहरण आज हमारे माननीय मुख्य अतिथि जी ने दिए हैं सारे संसद में हमारी अपनी संस्कृति हमारी अपनी आध्यात्म जो अपना हमारा अपना है भारत का वो संसद भवन में गूंज रहा है और वहीं से हमारे सारे कानून बनते हैं हमारे माननीय संसद गण केवल एक प्रश्न अपने आप से पूछें कि जो कानून वो पास करते हैं जो बनाते हैं उस कानून में क्या भारत की स्पिरिचुअलिटी 
आध्यात्म उनमें प्रतिलक्षित होता है यदि होता है तो उन्हें उस बिल को एक्ट की शेद देना चाहिए और यदि उन्हें लगे कि हमारी स्पिरिचुअलिटी के मानदंड पर कसौटी पर यह बिल खरा नहीं उतरता तो उन्हें इस बिल के विरोध में मत देना चाहिए ये बात जो संसद को लागू होती है ये न्यायालयों को लागू होती है जब वे कानून की व्याख्या करते हैं और यही हमारी कार्यपालिका को लागू होती है जो ये व्याख्या जो जो कानून का पालन कराते हैं कानून के कई मतलब निकलते हैं कई बार इंटरप्रिटेशन का क्वेश्चन आता है कार्यपालिका जब कानून का और अपने वरिष्ठों सुपीरियर्स के आदेशों का पालन करे तब प्रत्येक कार्यपालक अधिकारी को ये मानदंड अपने सामने रखना चाहिए कि क्या मैं इस कार्य का संपादन करते समय भारत के संविधान की भूमिका उद्देश्य का मैं वर्णित सिद्धांतों का पालन कर रहा हूं यदि उत्तर हा में है तो पालन करे यदि उत्तर ना में है तो पालन करने से इनकार कर दे धन्यवाद सीमा सिंह जी प्रियम्बर के संबंध में कुछ अपने विचार व्यक्त करने के लिए मुझे अतिरिक्त समय देने के लिए 